So the word serpent in Hebrew is nakash, and in Greek it's ophis, and, and both words make reference to an image, enchantment, or appearance. Um, so, for example, in Genesis 3, the word serpent in your King James translation is actually the word nakash, the Hebrew word nakash, which means snake, but it also means image, and it stems from this word, um, which is the same word basically, nakash, and it means um, to practice divination, and it's used 11 times in the Bible. Four out of those 11 times it means a ch enchantment, enchanter, divine, um, diligently observe. So um, some type of enchantment, something having to do with image. Um, if you go into the Greek word for serpent, for example, in um, Revelation 12, 9, the word is actually ophis. It's a Greek word. It means serpent. And it stems from this word, optonomai, which also makes reference to appearance. So to allow oneself to be seen, to look at, to appear. And so that's interesting. This word dragon also stems from a word that means to look. So um, it means, uh, it comes from the word dracon, which is Greek, which means a great serpent. And that stems from this word dracomai, which means to look. Um, the word devil is diabolos which is in Greek, and it means false accuser, slanderer. Um, and I'll just, I'll go into this one as well so I can show you. Um, so the word devil that you see stems from, or it actually means diabolos, slanderer, which stems from this word diabolo, which means to throw over or across and um, and it stems from these words dia and balo, which mean to scatter, to cast in through, and also through time. So this word and another word, this word dia, um, through, of place or of time. So through time is one of the meanings for this word dia. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And this is the other word, balo, which means to throw or cast into. So devil, to throw or cast into through time, to scatter through time. The word Satan or satanas in Greek means adversary or resist or oppose. And then if we go in um, to the section in Genesis about the, the fallen angels or the Nephilim, that also means to cast down. So I'll just go there real quick. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. So this word giants is nephil which is Hebrew for Nephilim, and it stems from this word, nephal, which means to fall or be cast down. This word Lord in the Old Testament, the all capital letters word Lord in the Old Testament is actually Yahavah. And that also stems that also stems from a word which means to cast down. So if we go in here, for example, in Genesis three, where it says the Lord made the serpent, this is Yahavah, the Hebrew word is Yahavah. It stems from this word Hayah, which means 
to become, exist, fall out, which can be compared to this word hava, which means to fall, and this word ava, which means desire, covet, be greedy. So um, you can see the connection here between um, this word Nephilim and the Lord, the Yahavah, both are falling, being cast down. And that we also have this reference to a peer, which was also um, that word Haya, not only means to fall out, but it also means to arise or appear. So again, we have this reference to an appearance of some kind, appear fall out, be cast out, um, be scattered through time, be cast into, appear, image, enchantment. So we see all the connections to the word ser be between the word serpent, the word dragon, which means to look also. All these image, enchantment, appear, look, cast into, through time, all the same thing, serpent, dragon, devil, um, Nephilim, the giants, and also Lord, Yahavah, fall out, be greedy, covet, up here. And then finally we have this word beast, which in Greek means brutal, savage, in Aramaic means animal. It stems from this word chaya, and I'll actually go in here and I'll show you this. We can go to... to um, well, I take it back. I'll just I'll just show this to you, and if you want to go check it out, you can go to the link below this video. But um, it stems from this word chaya, which means to live or to keep alive, which also can mean live prosperously or be revived from death. So that's kind of interesting because it has kind of an association with a vampire. Shava, which means declare or make known. This right here could also mean famous, make famous. Um, it stems from all these other things, be obedient, um, flesh as food. And then finally, at the very, very root, it ends up um, meaning to be left behind. So I thought that was interesting. The beast, all the way to the root, means to be left behind. Um, so we also notice a connection with this word chea. We see it in association with the serpent in Genesis 3.1 where it says, Now the Nachash or Nakash fell out and was more crafty than any Che. Um, and so if we look at the word Che, um, you can see right here, again, beast, Che, which means... Um, again, the reviving. Oh, here's that springtime reference again. Um, and this is a code that I mentioned in the last video that I made having to do with the words for God. And the code in here is um, there's a code having to do with the springtime and the summer. So I thought that was interesting that this word che is associated with the springtime and the summer um, is associated with the return of Christ. Um, in Matthew 24 Jesus had said when you see the the fig tree bud you will know that summer is nigh and in the video that I made um, about Genesis 3 where I explain where I um, went in and in examined every single one of these words um, we see that at the end of Genesis 3 1 through 7 I think this is verse 7 down here it actually makes reference to the year that the fig tree sprung forth which was if you understand the code in the Bible then you'd understand that Israel is the fig tree and so when it says that is the fig tree 
branch sprung forth. It's talking about when Israel became a nation in 1947. And so it's telling us that they were using this technology that changed their appearance, that made them beautiful and gave them a distinguished manner of life um, where they became famous. Um, this technology is was discovered apparently in 1947 because that's what this is referencing right here. So my point in this video though is just that this Che has an association to this Sade which means to spread out. So is this talking about space? It could be and Notice that it, it's also this word che means flowing. So it can mean alive or like we had understood um, just before, it, it can mean revival from the dead, like a vampire kind of thing. Um, but also it means flowing, simply flowing or sustenance. So a sustenance could really be almost anything um, and so this might be a mysterious um, thing this che is what I'm what I'm trying to say because although this word sade which means spread out and I'll just go here real quick although this means is usually translated to mean field um, it can also simply mean spread out. Um, see right here it comes from an unused root meaning to spread out. So if it's an unused root, well that could be because they didn't understand the concept of space 2,000 years ago when they were translating these texts or retranslating these texts. So it's possible that this snake image or this nakash that fell out of the sky or came from heaven was more crafty, was the craftiest substance of space. I'm sorry, sustenance of space. So this word che could actually mean some type of sustenance that comes from space. And that's my, my point with that. So I just thought that was interesting um, that we have um, a connection, that that connection is in here in association with the symbolism involving the beast. So being left behind, having something to do with living prosperously and, and some kind of some type of sustenance. I, th I believe, as I've shown in my other videos, that this is some type of technology that they use, some type of light bending technology that alters their appearance. And that's what it appears to be in Genesis 3, and you can watch that video. But really quick, I just want to go over um, some of these other associations with the beasts. We know that the um, the serpent deceives the whole world. We know that in um, Revelation it says that the image of the beast will speak. So again, we have reference to an image. And we know that the whole world admired the beast. So, And they, they would not make war with the beast. So who can you think of that nobody wants to make war with? Well, it's the religions, obviously. Um, who would want to make war with with a religion who would want to make war with um, you know somebody who's being passed off as good and righteous um, and it says in Revelation 13 the beast was a leopard a bear and a lion and here in Hosea it says the Yahavah was a lion a leopard and a bear so again we have reference to this this Babylonian system that Yahavah set up Babylon the lion Persian Empire, the bear, the Greek Empire, the leopard, and the Roman Empire, which is the beast. So um, there's a lot of a lot of things going on here, um, and you can investigate this as well. I mean, I'm just pointing out that there's deception going on, and that it appears that the deception is actually that these fallen angels are. Um, trying to pass themselves off as the one true God and that's that's what it it's really leading me to to believe and I'm not as I've said before I'm not coming to any conclusions about this yet but that's what it appears to be so far 
in my investigation. So I'll just leave you with that, and I hope you guys are doing well. Okay, bye-bye.